It's all in Japanese. Colin's head's exploded. No! Oh my... Hello everyone, hope you're well. Welcome to Kitchen Gadget uh, Testing 49. If you're not in the middle of a marathon, do check out the rest of the playlist at the end of this video. Start from number one, it will take you a whole weekend, but a lot of you love it, almost as much uh, as I do. And before commenting down below, please consider that some of these gadgets, although some are novelty, some can help people and do help people uh, with disabilities, which is an amazing thing. And it's just great to get people in the kitchen and just having fun in sometimes an interesting way, as you'll see today. There's actually a bit of cooking going on, quite a lot today. Let's start with the Yes, this first one is more of a, a utensil or a tool. This is something called a Nutella knife. Look. Oh, wow. <laughs> this just comes straight out of the packaging that I arrived in. There we go. It's a Nutella knife. Can you see the curvature on it? That's the only reason. I love how shiny that is. Look at that. It's called a Nutella spreader. And I like when I ordered it, I was like, Why? it's really nice and weighty, actually. Why would that be needed? Why would that be a thing? So I'm just going to get a knife out of my drawer, butter knife. Okay, so can you see the difference there between the Nutella knife and a normal knife? And in fact, this has a very delicate, well, in fact, that's not a butter knife, is it? <laughs> this is just a table knife, but that's what I would just normally grab from the drawer uh, with a serrated edge. So this is smooth, uh, so it's gonna be good for spreading. And also maybe the curvature is good for the jar. And you gotta be honest, the one time I actually do use Nutella, I don't use a knife at all. I tend to just use a spoon and just scoop it around because the curvature can get all in the gaps. Can you see? Hopefully that lines up with that. Yeah, it's got that sort of custom neck, hasn't it? A jar like that. With a standard knife, you can go in and you can scrape. And actually, to be honest, you can get in there. So, it, no, look, see, I am scratching at the surface. I'm revealing the glass there, there's not a problem. That's, that's fine. <laughs> straight down. Straight on there. It's fine. Okay, so the Nutella knife, it feels more valuable. I'm gonna stick that in there. So actually that is in line perfectly. So if I really try and help this, it just feels a bit over the top. But look, if I go like this, I am actually scraping that, so I'm getting it flush. What about the neck? Where's the neck? There you go. I'm getting some up there as well, but I'm really having to sort of scrape that. But I don't think it's really about that. I think it's just the fact that, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice knife that you can scrape in there and really wipe it clean like that. And then most importantly, you've got a smooth edge so you can then go along like that without serrating your tongue. <laughs> but no, I, I, I don't really, I think it's a novelty thing. I don't think Nutella knives are needed. Mm. Anyhow. Check this one out. This thing arrived uh, from a follower in Japan. Can you see that? It's like got this egg thing with a handle, uh, some weird, look, look at these serving suggestions. Now I got a bit confused because it looks like, it's like an egg scrambler, but then the Japanese are serving it with like caramel sauce and chocolate sauce and almost like a creme brulee kind of vibe. Um, it does have uh, some sort of help here. I don't know what this means some sort of like nuclear egg. But it looks like you put the egg in the sort of holster thing. You then boil it, which I think 30 minutes, perhaps. I don't know, we'll do that. Uh, and then you can serve it with your sauce on top like that. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know, but I think it's gonna be a bit of fun. Oh, let's just rip. No, no, I'm not gonna rip. I'm gonna give this one away because it's so quirky uh, to my patrons. Remember I do a Patreon giveaway for gadgets. Someone now has a cheese gun in their possession. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Looks like a light bulb. Look at the cartoon of the kid. No, don't eat the egg. <laughs> this is cool, it feels like a comic book. But it's all in Japanese. It's literally all in Japanese. Yes, every single bit. <laughs> so you open this and you can then take that out. Oh, this is quite sophisticated. Look at this. Okay, okay. So this is our <laughs> sort of shuttle. It's like a spindle, look. All that is, is that moves this. That's cool. It's that shuttle that the egg sits in. The egg goes in. This goes on. It honestly does suddenly feel like a NASA space launch. <laughs> it's sticking out the top there, look at that. <laughs> it's literally, I want to draw a face on it. Yes, let's draw a face on it. To infinity and beyond. <laughs> look at him. You're right in there, mate. 
<laughs> you're upside down. Maybe you can sort of screenshot this and have a look at how fun these instructions are. I mean, there's an egg there in shock. I've got the rotation picture to do next, but it doesn't say for how long. Okay. <laughs> so I've got various different versions of, I guess we're technically spinning the egg. I've got another one upstairs with like a pull cord uh, and that's basically it. I'm just worried that we haven't like pierced the egg. All right, that'll do. Oh, I think this is where we might go wrong because it's got here, this is black and white, but I can still see that neon color egg difference there. Maybe the eggs are different in Japan. I know they're different in, uh, in America, for example. Um, it's sort of saying how you would go from seeing the white to the yolk, maybe the shells are thinner, or maybe that's just a visualization of what is happening inside Colin. That's what I'm gonna call him, the very Japanese name, Colin. This is still cold, but rather than shocking it, I'm actually gonna put it in there now so it warms up with it. I am genuinely worried that it could burst a little bit by not putting a hole in it, but we'll go with it. In fact, you know what? I think I'll do quickly just another one off camera. Another random point. The gadget bizarrely smells of marzipan. There we are. So I'm going to put a little hole in this one with a big smiley face. It looks a bit like Jaws, doesn't it, from the James Bond movies. And then we'll see if that makes a difference. Only a little hole. This is actually a sweet corn holder thing. There we go. Oh, you see, it's seeping. That's possibly why you don't do it. But at least we've got some comparison. So we've got Colin in there and then we've got Ed. Ed, Ed the egg. Oh no, look, your brains are coming out already, Ed. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, can you see? It's actually spilling out a little bit, but I think it could seal up. Bye. Do you guys get that reference? I don't know. For those of you asking what Kitchen Gadget Testing 50 is gonna be, let me give you a hint. Those of you that are fans of Star Wars will have to stew for not much longer. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Ooh, let's get it off the heat, look at that. Um, I'm gonna put it on my smaller hob. That one's a bit powerful at the back, but I put a lid on it as well because I wanted to try and get some control. And I can still see an egg in there. What the heck is that? <laughs> Something floating to the surface. Uh, well, well one of you. <gasps> it's Colin. Colin's head's exploded. Look, he's got an afro. <laughs> Look, I'm glad we did Edward. Edward's holding strong. This next gadget is, uh, a, obviously you can tell, look, it is a medieval looking, this was sent to me. One of you guys sent me this, thank you very, very much. Very, very kind. Uh, this is a burger press, it's two burgers. Uh, gives you two separate options to do different thicknesses. So, let's make some burgers. A bit of salt, smoked garlic powder, some onions, and some beef mince. Wow. Mix this all together with one hand, so I'm keeping one hand clean for the camera, but I'm gonna squish all those ingredients together, all those flavorings, and you can add more, of course. It's your burgers. It's, it's more about the gadget, really, but I'm just gonna make a little bit of effort on this here. Wow, this mince is cold. <laughs> all right, I'd say that's pretty darn good. This gadget, oh, scrapey, scrapey, it's very simplistic, I think. I mean, I love it. It's really strong and metallic. I've no idea where it came from, which country, but, uh, Look, you open it up, you're gonna place your meat in there. Maybe you could grease it, maybe you could put some non-stick paper in if you want. Uh, but the most important thing here is, I don't know if you can see these spindles here. Now they apparently will adjust the height. You see that one's low down and that one's a bit higher up. So you, you put your meat in and you can press it down, but that should, can you see if I push them down? Look, look how lower down that one goes. So the lower down it goes, the more smaller and thinner your burger's gonna be. <laughs> it's really awkward. So I've never used this before. I've no idea how thick we're gonna make it. And bear in mind, whenever you cook any sort of meat or burger, generally it shrinks by about 10 to 20%. I've got one hand trying to keep that still clean. I'm gonna put this, I guess that's like a tennis ball size of meat. So we're gonna push that down on it. I'm gonna press that. Ugh. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I could just hear some squelching. I'm not sure if that's me. Oh, <laughs> that's actually really cool. It's a little bit lopsided, but that might have been the amount of meat that I put in there. That's actually worked really, really well. So with this plate a lot lower down, this is gonna be a thinner one, so I'm gonna get the same amount of meat, pull that down so it 
presses in place. Oh wow, you can see I've put too much in there. So the initial level of the plate is pushing the meat anyway, but we'll go for it. And then I'll push. Ugh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> this is brilliant. That's actually really fun. It's a teeny bit lopsided as I say, but I think you can play around with it and work with it. That's a fun little gadget. You know, I actually, I've just got this from my cupboard, prefer this one, you know, where you can push the meat in, it shapes it for you. And when you cook it, although they're that sort of shape, they do go round by the end and then you can freeze it as well. I do prefer that. Whereas this is a bit more of a sort of medieval times thing. I, I, I like it. It's not got the straightest edge on it, but that'll do. That is a nice burger. Oh. Uh, that's just watercress uh, burger sauce, which is basically just ketchup and mayonnaise mixed together and tomatoes in it. Oh my gosh. Anyhow, back to reality. Let's see how Ed and Colin are getting on. <laughs> Look, he's got a bit of a headache. Hello, I'm not having a very good day. <laughs> Love what you've done to your hair. Well, let's try Colin. No, let's not try Colin. Let's try Edward, which I just dropped. And he... You've got the little hole at the top that we made there. Other than that, and the fact that I just dented it, he looks all right. All right, mate, how was the sauna? <laughs> so these have cooled down a bit now. Uh, and what I think I'm gonna try and do, on the box, they've got some serving suggestions. I quite like the one where they've halved it there. And you're looking for a really nice yellowy yolk where the white and the yellow has mixed together, hence the spinning. Uh, this one might be more achievable, but we'll, we'll have a look. Sadly, Colin, I think we're gonna have to take your head off, mate. All right. Oh dear. I span that like a madman. Huh? He's smiling now. <laughs> that hasn't worked at all. Maybe I should have spun it much, much longer. And then you just want like a fairly flat bottom for it to sit on. And then you drizzle your caramel sauce on top. I don't really want to do that. It does not bode well for Edward, does it? Oh no. Oh wow, no, that one's worked better. The one that I put a hole in, look. That's actually worked. There's a difference in colour. That's actually darker. Maybe I spun the other one more. In fact, I think that I did it off camera, but I spun it less. I just went whoop, 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 quick. But that's definitely worked. So definitely put a hole in it. I'm sure the Japanese instructions probably told you to do that. They go for that sort of restaurant style zigzag by the looks of it. <laughs> that's gourmet right there. We'll get our teaspoon. So this is effectively what they're classing as a pudding. I'm classing it as a very confused boiled egg, but maybe the sweeten will help. No. <laughs> I was thinking, doesn't matter. The caramel sauce will mask it. No, it just tastes like rubber. We have at least proved that that concept worked. I guess it can vary depending on the sort of eggs you use and, um, and your taste buds. <laughs> Let's do something else. Let's bring together three gadgets that's gonna finish off this video to make one epic pudding. Okay, so we are making some macarons, not macaroons. Macarons are the slightly more posh things with almonds that are trickier to make. Uh, so I've got a gadget that should hopefully help with that. Uh, this is a macaron casito Z. Okay, it's a tray that's got the grooves in it and a pump, basically a piping bag. Uh, for the macaron mix, we need to separate our yolks. We've got like a little yolk catcher. And the last thing we've got to help with our ingredients, I uh, might not need it too much, but I'll probably use it going forward with other things. This is a digital scale with a measuring cup on the side. So it's got grams, mils, cups, everything you can think of, I think. I haven't used it yet, but that's what it's supposed to do. So, macaron-tastic times. And I like the fact that the lid's got like that stem on both sides. So this is it to, I guess, keep it cool and you can keep it in the fridge. But when you turn it over, and the spout is good too, like that, uh, you turn it over this, becomes the yolk catcher. Crack an egg in. The egg white is seeping away through those holes and the yolk will stand. There's a big gap in the middle too. It's draining it off for us. Oh my gosh. Boom, straight in like that. I only need three eggs. That's excellent. Look at that. The egg whites are collected down the bottom. I'm gonna leave them to do their thing and we'll crack on with making it. Okay, so this is the digital mug. Uh, oh, look, it's got cups on that side already and mils and ounces on that side, which is really, really cool. Um, but there is a digital screen here and it says tar. What does tar mean? It's like a pirate thing. And then mode. 
So you put it on a level surface. I think that's quite important. Uh, put the power on, then the LCD screen will show. Uh, in normal mode, the scale cup is set to grams, uh, and the density is one gram equals one mil, which is, I think is that's about normally pretty accurate, to be honest. So it's very cool because you're gonna get your fluid kind of measures there anyway, but then on here, you're gonna get your grams and your other cup sizes and your ounces and all that other stuff as well. Um, I don't wanna go too crazy with this because you can sort of see what this is gonna do, but I do need some almond flour. Oh, actually, I've just seen it's got like one of those watch battery things in there and I can't quite pull that out. So there's a perfect gadget for that too. Slightly dirty Nutella knife. <laughs> There we go, and we should. Oh look, we've got power. We got more we've got power. 20.9 degrees C, that's the, tem that's the temperature in it. It's got a thermometer in it, what? I'm just gonna put it up here. There is a little bit of wobble in that, look at that. But I'm gonna be super delicate with this. I need 95 grams of ground almonds. Come on, I'm gonna suck at the petrol pump. There we go. Just a little speck and it's moved it up to 90. That's exactly what I needed. 95 uh, grams, which of course is 200 mils. There we are. There's also about seven ounces or three quarters of a cup. What a cool thing. I need icing sugar this time. Oh my. <laughs> there we go, oh no, 202. Oh, that's what I do at the petrol station. I'm like, yep, yeah, gonna get it bang on 10 pounds, 20 quid, 30 quid, whatever, 10 pound 2B. So we'll just pour that straight in there and yes the plume of icing sugar that's brought it down to 200 grams again. Those two grams are in the air somewhere. And if you want to make it super fine, uh, you can get yourself a serve like that, and then just work it through. We can now go back to our egg whites, tip them in there, and then I guess what we can do is tip the yolks in here, store them upside down like that. <laughs> that's awesome. We'll whisk these up. Okay, so we've got soft peaks. This is uh, 50 grams of sugar. Again, using uh, our little jug thing, which I've washed out. So I'm gonna do this in about four batches. I've got the stiff peaks there, so vanilla extract. And a smidgen of food coloring. So I'm gonna go for yellow. Ugh, don't need too much. I'm gonna do this in batches. There we go. Nice and blended in. Stiff peaks, and if you wanna check that it's done, Stick it over your head and it shouldn't fall out, but I'm too mature for that. See? I've uh, transferred our sieved almond mixture. I'm gonna do this in four batches. We just carefully fold it in to that whipped mixture. All right, so that's combined uh, our third gadget coming up. And I guess this is a little snippet of a request I get quite often of doing a cooking video with just gadgets. So if you like what we're doing here, in this little section, let me know. Okay, this thing, <laughs> that's the baking mat. There we go, it's a little bit like flimsy. Uh, there we go, nice round uh, silicon baking mat, which I'll give a wash. And this looks like a whoopee cushion. It's not, and okay, yeah, it is like an icing pen. We've got literally different nozzles on it. So we just kind of want a fat round one. Oh, and a cap, that's pretty good. Yep, so that's one pretty good. Ooh, we've got to get a batter in there and then stick this sort of curved lid on. Let me give this all a wash and then we'll sort it out. Okay, so that's in there. It's not the most snug fit, but I'm putting it in the tray because look how like loose that is. Once we pipe them, if we want to move it again, it's going to all collapse everywhere. But we'll open up our whoopee cushion and I am going to spoon in the filling. I've got to just try and get this lid on now. This is going to be tricky. It's sort of got a lip on it. You kind of want to seal it down and now is not the time for seal puns. Ugh, come on, is that on? No. There you go, it's on. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. So the other thing with macarons is once you pipe them, you want them to kind of go hard on the top, which takes about half an hour to an hour. So we're going to leave them to stand, but also you're going to want to tap them to get air bubbles out at first, which is why the tray would be so much better than just leaving it on that going. But let's try this out. I'm going to... Squeeze there, oh that's coming out so easy. I don't know how big to do them. I'm just gonna wing it. It's quite good because for sy symmetry, it's giving me like a consistent vibe. I think for this experiment, that will be it. But it is sitting nicely between it. And a little trick I learned, if you lick your finger, if there's any sticking up, you can just tap it down like that. 
So there's me tapping. I might do a few more anyway, but that's the air bubbles coming up. We now leave this for at least half an hour so it firms to the touch before baking. These are going in for 17 minutes. But just as an aside, while they're in the oven, look, this just arrived. Do you remember Alice that uh, showed you the tweet? This is the actual drawing. Huh? Look, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. If anyone else wants to do some fan art, I'm mulling over having a whole wall full of it. I've got quite a bit collecting up and uh, this is pretty impressive. Look at that. I can't even do an etch sketch <laughs> I've just got them out of the oven. They're looking good. They've got some decent feet on them, but I'm going to let them cool down fully and we're going to fill them. And there's only one thing to fill them with, the Nutella knife. Oh, you see that? <laughs> and also, you can't see it. I did a mini one as well. <laughs> awesome. Okay, no joke. Moving the camera to basically say, thanks for watching. I drop it on the floor, my mini one. No. I totally did that on purpose so I could have the bigger one. Here we go. Oh, should have chilled it really. The Nutella's spilling out. It's not a bad thing. Those three gadgets came together quite nicely then. And the Nutella knife was actually helping. I wasn't really thinking about it. I was just scooping it up. But yeah, you know, again, novelty that, but they've all actually been pretty darn good today. This was my favorite gadget out of all. Well, the sun has actually come out a little bit as well. It's a little bit brighter in here now, just to celebrate the world of this gadget. And actually most of them today, they're all pretty good. Uh, this one, the novelty one from uh, Japan, I'm gonna sign that right now. Smiley face and all that stuff. Uh, I'll be giving that away to Patreon. So if you are not a su supporter on Patreon, please consider doing so. Don't forget to have a barrel on now. Any cool gadgets you've seen, do let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and uh, this has been excellent. Bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Cyber's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. It's all in Japanese.